Well, now that we've seen that the math works out with an animation, let's analyze this pendulum problem in a little bit more detail in a Jupyter notebook where we can import more mathy technical stuff to do a, a deeper analysis of the problem. So again, we're going to define our equation of motion just like we had before. It looks exactly the same because it's still Python. Uh, we'll set our initial condition, same as we had before, and here we'll get to our simulation. The main difference here is, instead of creating an animated sphere that will move across the screen, I want to store all of the uh, theta values so that I can graph it later and analyze moment by moment what's going on with it. So in order to create a graph, I need a list of values. I need a set of values for theta and a set of values for time. And in order to do that, we're going to use a, uh, a Python list item. The idea of a list is that it's just a collection of items. So theta list is going to be one value of theta after another in an order. Same thing for time, it's going to be all the times. And so each of those items gets paired together, right? So the zeroth item in theta list gets paired with the zeroth item in time list. The first theta gets the first time, the second theta gets the second time, etc. So that I've got those, you know, lined up with each other at the same steps in the simulation here. Uh, we'll stick with 100 seconds here, that sounds fine. And then we just run the euler kromer method like we had before. That part really does not change. But now instead of an animation, we need to add these items to the list. So we'll append the current time to the time list and append the current theta to the theta list. Append just means you have a list, you have an item, take that item, add it to the end of the list, make the list longer by one. That's all the append function does. Uh, so there's not going to really be any great output here. Uh, it's just going to run this as finished because now we have that information stored in timeless and Thetalus. One of the neat things about a Jupyter Notebook is because the code is split up into these cells, I can run this and debug it and, and fix this cell as many times as I want. And each time it will leave me with a theta list and a time list stored in memory that I can then use later. So I don't have to run the entire code every single time I want to make a change. So what we'll do here is use the matplotlib library to create a graph of theta versus time. That's as simple as plt.plot timeless comma theta list. The first item is going to go in the uh, horizontal axis. Second item is going to go in the vertical axis. Also here on Google Colab, it will show me, if I hover over the, the variable, it will show me what items there are in the list. So that's pretty cool. I can just get a little visual check, make sure that came out all right. And so we'll run this and I get this you know, it's oscillating, right? It's kind of, it's difficult to see because I have a whole lot of oscillations there. So I believe I can change that with xlim. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, so I want to say left equals, uh, let's see, let's make that one zero. And let's say right equals, uh, how about 20? Why don't we just go to 20? So I'm not destroying any of the data. It's still there saved in time list and theta list. I'm just zooming in on it on the graph here. And it, it oscillates. It does the thing we saw in algo do. It does the thing we saw in the animation. It does the thing you would expect uh, uh, from an experiment, you know. Uh, now here's the other thing that I can do. Uh, so I've graphed the, the theta, the angle versus time. Uh, I could also graph theta dot versus time, right? So I could just copy and paste this. But instead of graphing theta, I could graph theta dot. So theta dot. Now the problem is I don't have a theta dot list yet. So what I'll need to do is go back up here because <clears throat> I've stored all of the theta values. Now I need to do the same thing and store a set of theta dot values. So we'll say theta dot list equals theta dot. And everything I do with theta list I'm now going to do with theta dot list. So I'm gonna look down here for theta list. Okay, here's where I appended it. Copy and paste. And we'll just change these thetas into theta dots. All right, once you have a procedure down, you can repeat it with, with other uh, variables there. Uh, okay, I need to create a new figure. I forgot to do that. Uh, we'll say plt dot fig, I think it is. Uh, that's actually the, the full word figure there. There we go. So now I've got two figures. I've got theta. I've got theta dot over the same time range. And, it, you know, no real surprise, this, the, the theta dot graph looks like the derivative of the theta graph, right? So it starts out here uh, with a slope pretty close to zero. I start out with a theta dot very close to zero. This thing uh, slopes downward here, and so theta dot becomes negative. 
uh, when this thing, when theta dot, when theta reaches a zero, theta dot is at, excuse me, when theta is at a minimum or a maximum, theta dot is at a zero and a zero, right? So it does all the derivative rules that you would expect. I think I'd like to zoom in on that just a little more. Let's maybe go to 15. I suppose I could uh, T max for graphing. I could just make that a variable and then change that more easily here. T max for graphing equals 15. Cool, cool. All right, now let's think about getting the trajectory off of this thing, right? So making sure it has that arc pattern that we saw before. It looks like it should have an arc pattern, but we probably want to make sure. Uh, so what I can do with this, um, I could go back up and just keep an X list and a Y list, or I could just calculate an X list and a Y list off of the theta list, right? So what I can do with this is say, I want an X list that is equal to, uh, what was it? L times sine of theta list. And so if I pass this list in here, theta list, if I pass this list as an argument to the sign, it's gonna return to me a list of X values, right? So let me show you what this looks like. Let's say I print X list here. And so now I have a list of values of X. So each one of these is L times the cosine, or excuse me, L times the sine of that value in the theta list. So it's actually very efficient to do this. I don't even have to set up a loop. It's doing a loop kind of in the background. Uh, it's just much cleaner in terms of the writing there. And so for Y, I can have negative cosine theta list. Just make sure that doesn't produce any errors. Yep. And then I can create a trajectory of that. So we'll grab our block of code here, copy and paste, uh, create a new figure. And for this one, I want X list and Y list. And we can make, just make these labels X and Y. I wonder what that output is. It's from, I'm not sure what that's from. Uh, so I've got theta oscillating here. I got theta dot here and here I've got my pendulum arc, right? And this is over many oscillations. So you might notice this line looks a bit thick because it's drawing it over and over again over the same locations, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, we could create a graph of the energy versus time, right? We did this in algo do, we did this in tracker. Let's make sure that the energy graph ends up looking similarly. And again, I could just calculate this directly, right? I could call this kinetic energy list equal to one half times mass times L squared times, is that gonna be theta dot squared? Again, just like we had when we were setting up the Lagrangian, I'm just bringing in the same equation for kinetic energy list. Um, I could probably shorten these variable names. Some of you are probably yelling at me in the comments that these are too long, but you know, there are no more limits on variable name length. And so it's always nice to make it something that is readable, especially in an educational environment like this. All right, so potential energy is going to be, uh, what was that? That's gonna be mass times G times Y. Mass times G times Y, yep. <clears throat> I might as well use the Y here. I've already got that part uh, uh, calculated in a list here. Oh, it's that will need to be list and this will need to be list. There we go. So I have theta dot list and Y list. Cool. And then I can make a graph of that versus time. So we'll go copy paste. Oh, I need one more. I need the total energy and here I'll just add kinetic energy list plus the potential energy list and then it'll add the, you can actually put in two lists here. It will add those, will it add those item by item? I should probably check that, shouldn't I? Sometimes it, for some things it will add them item by item and sometimes it will just combine the two <laughs> lists. Uh, can I print the length of that? Uh oh, oh, what do we call it? Do we call it mass? Oh, we actually never define the mass of this thing, okay. Well, let's give it a mass of one. I didn't need the mass because it canceled out up here, uh, but I do need it for my kinetic energy and potential energy here. Unsupported operand types for... Oh, right, right, I can't just square a list. 
Okay. I thought that would take each item in the list and square it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so let's say for i in length of theta dot list, right? We'll just loop over each of these items. Uh, I want kinetic energy list to append this calculation here, copy and paste, and we'll just make this theta dot list of i. So the little square bracket i means it's the ith item in theta dot list. So it's going to go item zero, item one, item two, item three, and four, etc. on down the on down the line. So we don't need that anymore. Uh, then let's do the same thing with potential energy list. We'll say dot append m times g times y list again of i. Although that would have worked. Uh, but let's just do it. Let's just do that all in this one. Um, in this one, let's just do it all in this one loop uh, just to keep it consistent. All right, now this is where it's going to get tricky because I want this to be dot append of these. Uh, oh, and then I can just say of i for each of these. And so I'll need to start each of those lists, right? I'll need a uh, kinetic energy list Start out empty. You can always start a list as just empty. Open bracket, close bracket is a list of length zero, which is pretty handy. Uh, it's just a nice, easy way to start it. There are other ways to start a list or generate them more efficiently, but you know, for educational purposes, this is a good way to start. All right, so that should create these empty lists and then append these items here. Right, so for item zero, this will become item zero. Item zero, this will become item zero. And so this will append item zero plus item zero there. All right, let's make sure that comes out to be the correct length. Int object is not iterable. Since when is theta dot list an integer? That's very weird. Oh, right, 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 right. I need this to be range of length. And I need to spell the word range correctly. Cool, okay, uh, 10,001, that's the length we were expecting because that's how many data points we had uh, for, for the time list. Okay, now let's put in our graph. PLT.figure, uh, let's do three plots here. We're gonna need kinetic uh, energy list. Oh, I need that to be time list. On my kinetic energy list. So now what I'm going to do, previously I had to put all these in separate windows, but because these are now energies, I can put these in the same window. And in fact, it's handy to do so. Potential energy list, total energy list, just like we were doing in tracker. Let's have this be the time and this be energy. All right. Control enter. No red errors this time. Good for me. Oh, and I need to give these folks some labels, don't I? So I can tell what in the world they are. I believe that gets called label. Label equals KE. Does that work? I think that's I think that's legal. Oh, I have to add a plt.legend, that's right. I love matplotlib. I feel like a lot of the, there we go. I feel like it's, it's, I feel like it's a lot of lines of code to create a graph, but I don't know how I would shorten them. I only say that because it can be imposing to students sometimes to, you know, have to put in seven lines of code just to get a single graph that they're interested in. I don't know. Okay, so we get our kinetic energy up here. It is oscillating our potential energy down here and our uh, total energy here in green. Uh, let's set an X limit for that. Forgot to copy that from above. Just so it's a little bit more visible. There we go. So I see that the kinetic energy is oscillating. The potential energy is oscillating, but they're oscillating opposite of each other such that their total is roughly constant. There's a little bit of wiggle there like we've seen a couple times before. Again, that's just a, a, an artifact of the step size. If I go back up here and make the step size smaller by a factor of 10, run the simulation, run the graphs, now it's much flatter, right? So the total energy is a way you can tell whether your step size is of a reasonable magnitude because it should 
come out to be flat unless you have some kind of dissipative forces in your model.